<laughs> okay, I think I'm in the frame now. Hello, everyone. Let me know that you can hear me and see me. And today we're talking about manifesting faster with inner work when God is your divine masculine provider. I'll give you guys a chance to hop on. I know there's a delay. Hello, hello. I feel like the YouTube delay has gotten longer. Is it just me? Am I just like vibrating at a higher frequency or it just seems like forever for when I go live and when you can actually like see me? It's so bizarre. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. I think they've made it longer. I'm just perceiving time differently. So hello. Hello. Yes. Okay, awesome, Kayla. Thank you for letting me know. Welcome all our members, new members and our existing members. If you'd like to become a member so you can uh, have access to ex exclusive content and chat and ask questions, then there's a join button and there's also a link in the description box. Today we're talking about how to manifest faster. Now, when I did my live stream a few days ago, I think it was the day before yesterday, I told you guys my story of how I found the law of attraction, but I ended my manifestation after like manifesting my husband. But there's so much more that happened after that. So today what I want to do is actually I want to take you even before the point where I found the law of attraction and tell you the story of how the law of attraction found me. Because remember that whatever we desire also desires us. And so what happened was when I was about 16, that's when I started awakening into like my self-aware Barbie. And now you guys know, for those of you guys that have been following my work, have my book, is that there's four stages of consciousness that I work through, right? There's the basic babes, self-aware Barbie, million dollar babe, and high-end divinity. Self-aware Barbies are women that go into their masculine energy because of fight or flight, right? We need our masculine energy. Million dollar babes also have it, but they have it more integrated. I went into my masculine energy because I didn't feel safe in my life. There was trauma that had happened in my life and I felt like I couldn't really trust the people around me and that I needed to step into my own sort of like masculine power. So this is when I started using my will to make things happen and boy, did I make things happen. So I started using the law of attraction here without knowing the term or the verbiage or the principles officially. And so um, the first place where I like really remember using it without knowing it is when I wanted to get into Northwestern University. Um, all of my cousins, like for those of you guys that don't know, like I don't know what it is, where number it is now, but Northwestern University in Chicago where I was born and raised was like the top like most university. At the time that I wanted to get in, it was ranked, <clears throat> excuse me, top 12 in the nation. So if you looked up, you know, top 20 universities in the United States, at that time, Northwestern University would come in number like 12 or something like that. I don't know what number it is now. So it was like a big deal to get into Northwestern and everyone around me believed that I was dumb. So I grew up being told that I'm stupid, that I'm dumb, that I can never like figure anything out. I, I heard things like, what's going to become of you? Who's going to marry you? So I m making a statement like saying, I'm going to go to Northwestern University made people laugh because at up until this point, I didn't have like the kind of confidence or the kind of energy where people were like, oh, this, this girl is intelligent and she's going to get into Northwestern University, right? So I had teachers that believed in me. My seventh grade professor, like teacher believed in me. I had a teacher in eighth grade that kind of believed in me. In high school, I had several teachers that could like see something in me. And so I just decided that I was going to get into Northwestern University. And some of my cousins who had applied there who were way smarter than I was, had the grades to back them up, had everything that they needed, couldn't get in. So when I started announcing that I'm going to get into Northwestern University, literally everyone was laughing at me. Some people were trying to be nice and they were like, well, you should have a plan B. And I was like, I don't need a plan B because I am going to go to Northwestern University. I applied to Northwestern University. 
I got into Northwestern University and that's where I, I studied for eight years. And it was like the biggest blessing of my life. I still thank God for that experience and going there. So I learned so much. So when I, so that was like my first manifestation. I had faith. I had will. Like I did the things that I had to do. I just would not take no for an answer. Like whoever told me this is not going to happen to you. Like I wasn't, the words were coming out of their mouth, but they were not penetrating my consciousness. If you know what I mean? Like they weren't like, they were like bouncing off of me. So when I was at Northwestern University, um, you know, I have other things I manifested during this time, uh, like my first job and uh, how I got promoted in my first job. There's millions of things I've manifested. I'm not even going to mention them because in the grand scheme of the big things, if I start talking about all the little ones, we'll be here for like 10 lifetimes. There's so many things. So basically, since I was like 16, I started having like what people could call the Midas touch, like anything I would say I'm going to do, I would do. And even if people laughed at me or they said this is not going to happen, I could hear the words coming out of their mouth. But for some reason, they wouldn't penetrate my consciousness. So when I was at Northwestern University, I had this professor, by the way, I loved all of my professors at Northwestern, like best professors ever. However, this particular professor was my least favorite out of all the professors that I had, my least favorite, only because you could tell that she didn't love her job. In fact, she often mentioned that, uh, you know, she was she only had to have this job because her husband's job didn't pay insurance. So I talked about that story in my Lady Balls book. So I'm sitting in his, her class one day and like she had this habit of like not explaining things and then like getting mad at you. So anyways, anyways, she, so I was kind of like zoned out like half in half out in this classroom and it was an English writing class. So all of a sudden I'm like zoned out and I come back into presence and she's saying, if I had a million dollars invested, I would live off, live off the interest and just read all day. Well, you guys know I am addicted, addicted, like full blown, need this 12 step program, addicted to reading. I love reading. I'm obsessed with reading. So when she said this, I felt like there were angels singing. I felt like the clouds had parted. Like it was like, like God was speaking to me. And all of a sudden, she had my full blown attention, even though I typically didn't like her class. And I'm thinking, wait, what? You can invest a million dollars and like not have to work, not have to deal with people, not have to leave your house and just freaking read all day? Whoa, I did not know or have access to that kind of information. And so all of a sudden, my mind just starts racing my mind goes what else can you do with money can you really do this can i really do this so all of these questions pop up in my head and then i'm like that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna have a million dollars i'm gonna invest those million dollars and then i'm never gonna have to work by the way at this point in my life i hadn't started the real estate business yet so i was like in a corporate job so i was like happy like happy to have this kind of image in my mind and I set it in motion that that was going to be me one day. And you guys already know that that has happened. And then I have 10x that. So that was, again, me using the law of attraction without knowing that word. Okay. After that, I quit my corporate job, started my business. This was my real estate business with the help of my mom. And I was first just doing like residential real estate. Then I got into investment real estate. It was more money. I got into that. And then I start, I became an investor. So I used to buy these two to three unit, two, three, four unit buildings and rehab them and then either rent them out or sell them, like flip them. This is when I was in real estate when real like was big. It was like booming. It was like the easiest thing to make money back then. So I started having all of this money coming into my life. Uh, and but at this time, I hadn't like started doing like, you know, work around money. So all of this money was coming in, I was attracting it, but I didn't know how to keep it. I didn't know I hadn't 
crack the code on how to invest it and grow it yet. So this is when I, at this period of my life, I had some experiences where I lost that part of me. I had this wounded experience where I lost my personal power. And let me know in the chat or give this a video a thumbs up. If you've ever had that experience where you had your personal power and then it got taken away from you or like you lost it. So you guys already know that story. I got married very young. That married and marriage ended up in a scam. Uh, I was pregnant in that marriage and then it ended and I became a single mom all during this time that I'm starting my business in, you know, in school full time. And so there was this moment where I forgot that part of me that could make things happen. And this is when like the universe also lost something because remember just as much as we need the universe, we need Kainat. Kainat is the Urdu word in my culture for all that is. It also means like universe. It just means everything, all that is. And so I had this relationship with the Kainat and at this time I lose it. And, but the thing is, it wasn't just my loss. It was also Kainat's loss. It also needed me. It was using me. I was God's how. I was the universe's how, right? We're always like, how do I do this? How, 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 how? I was the how. The universe was living through me. And so, of course, as the universe does, it started trying to find a way to re remind me of who I was and the power that I had inside of me. And so the story that I told before, so what happened was I get divorced and I go into this really, really dark, deep depression and this, this really dark place. And I uh, remember like just talking to my, being on the phone with my cousin, my, my cousin and I grew up together. She's, she's my best friend. And I was talking to her and she was like, Mina, what's like, just get yourself out of the state. And I was like, I don't know. Like, I'm just really depressed. I don't even want to live anymore. Like, what's the point? I was just in a really dark. And she was like, you know what? Just book a flight and come to come to L.A. And she's I'm like, no, I'm just I'm not going to be good company. And she's like, listen, we've had a lot of good times together. We've had a lot of fun. Just come back and it'll just be like old times. Like we'll shop. We, she calls it hot, hotling in my culture. Hotling means, so in my culture, they, they, instead of using the word restaurant, they say hotel. We're going to go eat at the hotel. I don't know why. Hotel means restaurant. And so she used to say, come over, we're going to go hotling, which means we're just going to eat out. We're not going to cook at home. We're not eating any meals at home. We're eating every meal out. And she was like, we're going to go and have fun. We're going to shop. And I, and I was in such a dark place. And she was like, just please come, just do this for me. So I pack my bags, get a ticket for Armand and I, and I'm like, you know, on the next flight. So I'm at the airport and I must have really been looking depressed AF because I'm sitting there depressed and there was someone sitting next to me. And this person goes, I know what you need. And I'm just like, are they talking to me? Just ignoring them. And then they go, you need the secret. And this is like 2006 when like the secret was like coming out or whatever. So I, I, I'm like, okay, I'm pretty sure they're talking to me, but like, I'm not like, I'm in a dark place. I'm not like my friendly, bubbly, you know, outgoing self. So I pick up my bag, I pick up my child and I like trying to get away from this person. I just dashed into the bookstore and there was like, you know how those, they have those bookstores at the... Uh, airport where you can buy a candy and souvenirs and books. So I go in there and Armand's like, you know, gr grabbing for the candy and I'm looking at the books and I see this book and it says the secret. And I'm just like, huh? <laughs> what? So I get the book, I get Armand's candy, I pay, I get on my flight, I go see my cousin, we have a good time, I come back home and I forgot about the book. It's just like in my bag. Like I, I literally had a toddler at this time, right? So I wasn't like like on the plane reading the book be like I normally would because I literally have a toddler. So anyways, I uh, come back home. And at this time, I was trying to sell my condo after my divorce. And 
trying to get my ex out of there. Like it was a whole thing anyways. And like selling the condo. And then uh, I was going to, so I was staying with my parents. So I'm at my parents' house. A year passes and I don't remember the book. A year later, I've sold that condo. I've bought a new condo because I'm in real estate and I'm like buying and flipping properties. And I'm like, I'm going to get a condo. And by the way, I have to tell you guys this. I had such a limiting belief at this time. I only felt safe in condos. That's why I have owned so many condos in my life because, and I would buy these two, three, four unit buildings to sell for like to flip, but I would never buy a house for myself. My limiting belief was that a house was unsafe because like someone could get in, but a condo was safe because I was surrounded by all of these people. I know it's kind of funny now thinking about it, but I was, I would only buy condos for Armand and I, but like, yeah, I, I, like my mom would be like, just buy a house. I'm like, no, 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 I can't live in a house by myself. So anyways, I uh, buy a condo and I'm moving and I find the book. And this was when, when the universe was like, we need her back on our team. She manifests so good. She does life so beautifully. And she's forgotten. Wake her up. So it was like the universe kept pinging me, trying to get this information to me to remind me of what my power was and what I was capable of doing. But because of the, the circumstances of my life being so busy, like I was a full-time student at Northwestern University doing real estate full-time. I also had gotten my broker's license at this time, my uh, loan officer license. I owned over 20 properties at the same time. And I was a single mother. Like, can we just like have a standing ovation and a slow clap that of that version of Mina? Oh my God. I just want to like, just bow down to that woman's will because I have no idea looking back how she did it, but she did it. <laughs> so... I find the book again. I try to read the book, even though I love books, but the way that this book was written, it felt very choppy to me and I just couldn't resonate with it. So somehow, I don't remember if it was a client who ran, randomly told me, someone told me or I found out that there was a DVD that went with the book. So I bought the DVD and I watched it and it was like God was speaking directly to me it was like angels were singing and i was like oh my god so i watched the dvd and i hit replay and i watched it again and i was in shock and i like i had this schedule where i would wake up go to school go, do my work like take care of Armand, and watch the dvd so that first like six or seven months I watched the DVD every single day. And then after that, I switched to every couple of days. And then for the next 14 years, I watched it every single week. And up until two days ago, I used to watch it once every year. Two days ago, I made the decision to watch it every time I'm working out. So I have a large screen TV in my own gym and I watched various things on there when I'm working out but I'm like you know what I'm just gonna make like I'm just gonna automate it because every time I go in the gym I'm like what should I watch today and then, sometimes I'll waste like five minutes trying to figure out what I'm gonna watch that day and I don't like short videos I need like a longer video so that I can do my red light therapy my vibration plate my workout like everything and not have to keep finding new stuff so I'm like it's the DVD is like, uh, or the movie, the secret is like an hour and 20 minutes. I'm like, that's perfect. So up until two days ago, I was, uh, you know, so after 14 years of watching it once a week, I shifted to watching it once a year. And then now two days ago, I have made the intention that I'm actually going to watch it every time I work out. I generally work out about four to five times a week. Uh, sometimes I'll do six times, but generally it's more like four to five times a week. So I'll, I'm like recommitting to it. So when I found the DVD, like I found God, I found God and I found inner work. I started using all of the principles. Like I was like, okay, God, I'm gonna, you showed me this. I'm gonna turn 
the secret and manifestation into my religion. That is my religion. I'm going to practice it every day as my religion. And let's do this together. And after that, it, you know, it was like, bam, bam, bam. I'm like, okay, like, I want this, that thing would show up. So I met after like some of the biggest manifestations after that tiny ones will be here for 10, 10 incarnations. I manifested my husband using the law of attraction. I manifested a paid off house. I always wanted a paid off house, manifested a paid off house. I manifested romance in my marriage. I manifested the move to Houston. So Irfan lived in a different state. Um, and I did want to manifest out of Chicago. So luckily, I was able to manifest out of Chicago. But where he lived, I didn't really love. So then I manifested out of there to Texas. I always wanted to live in Texas. And we had spent a lot of time here uh, because I used to have an uh, uncle that lived here. And I was like, I want to I wanna one day live in Texas. So I manifested the move to Texas. I manifested the diagnosis that finally revealed my health issues, um, uh, which was RA. You guys know that. That was in 2012. And then I manifested a cure, a complete remission. Um, I got diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis in 20, uh, 2012. And I have had zero symptoms for like over a decade. Like I think I had like one or two tiny flare ups during that time and completely medic no medication just like diet, lifestyle, and spiritual practices only. So I manifested that. I manifested a baby girl. I always wanted a daughter. You guys know that. You guys were with me during that journey. I manifested that. Um, I manifested like full-blown like worship and romance in my marriage. My marriage was always a great partnership. Like Irfan is a great guy. He's a stand-up guy. But because we were both having like container issues in our marriage in the beginning, we didn't have like what we have now, like we, we had a great marriage, but we didn't have like the romance, uh, honeymoon, uh, ever after ripping your clothes off, kind of like can't live without you kind of vibes. And so I manifested that you guys remember that, uh, I've manifested numerous cars. I manifested $2 million before the business and before, so, uh, without me working at all, no work, at all, no job, no business, manifested $2 million. You guys remember we were on Dave Ramsey, like oh, that was all before my business. Then when I wanted a business, I manifested this business and then uh, I manifested first class travel only, five star resorts only. I manifested this mansion, you guys remember that. Um, what else? You guys probably know more than me because I forget sometimes. I manifested my books. I wanted to write books. This was something I had promised my seventh and eighth grade teachers that I would write a book one day. Wrote both of my books. I have several journals now. Countless things. There's so many more. Recently, I manifested a completely flat tummy. You guys know after I had, uh, well, my, after my first pregnancy, I had like a whole bunch of loose skin got rid of that. So basically at this point in my life, there is absolutely nothing that I haven't manifested. I manifest faster now. And the reason for this is, is because instead of just relying on a process, meaning a process of like something outside of me, I decided to change myself internally using inner work so that inner so that manifesting didn't take as much time okay and so that has been my biggest hack can you manifest without inner work sure i see people doing it all the time i manifested before i did inner work but what i started noticing was there were some things I would manifest really easily and they were very effortless. And then there were other things where I would get stuck or I would manifest them and then I would self-sabotage. So the question I asked God was, hey, how come this, this, and this, I manifested so quickly and I didn't sabotage, but this thing, it took a while, it took effort and I sabotaged it. And the answer that I got back was because belief, right? Like the belief part is so important when it comes to the law of attraction and manifesting. And so my beliefs around those other things was like, yes, I get to have it. I'm worthy. You know, it's easy. Of course, it's duh. And it happened. With these other things, I had wobbly energy. I didn't really believe I was worthy or I didn't believe that I could keep that thing. So that's where the inner 
work portion of it began for me. And what I started noticing is that inner work would compound for me. So if I did inner work in like this little corner of my life, then these other areas would also loosen up and I would start manifesting faster in those areas. That's how I actually came up with those four, the four stages, because depending on what stage you're in, whether you're a basic babe, self-aware Barbie, million dollar babe, high end divinity, you're going to manifest differently. You're going to, the effort required will be different. The channels will, will be different. What is available to you will be different because the frequency and the beliefs that you are holding that you are resonating that are coming from you okay so that's why for me when i teach the law of attraction and in all of my courses i have over 83 courses at this time and, and growing fast uh, every single one there's always in our work in all of my courses there's always manifestation principles they're kind of like embedded because you cannot remove those things outside of me. You cannot say, this is Mina, and then this is manifestation is separate, and God is separate, and this is separate. Like it's a, it's a very holistic approach for me, and I use all of those things at the same time. They've become a part of me. They're embodied in me, and I use them every single day. I have had moments, obviously, where I've forgotten. I've had moments where I've self-tabotized. Like I have a very human experience with this, but I, when I come back, to what do I know, God? What do we know? Like take inventory. And when I remember, it's like get back, game back on, right? So at this point in my journey, because I've been practicing and living this for 17 years, I'm able to go into like instant manifestation. And there's just new ways uh, that things come up. Sometimes I manifest things and realize I wanted them after they've already been manifested. So it's like, it's like the level even beyond instant manifestation because even with instant manifestation, you have to at least think about it, right? It's like it, it's like done. It's already happened. So let me see what you guys are saying. You manifested. Oh, I hate it when it gets lost behind that thing. You manifested the Universe Guru Online Academy with 50 plus courses. Yes, and I. the biggest thing for me is the fact that Tens of thousands of women and some men credit my work, my embodiment for their life changes, for their transformation. And that means so much to me because when I started, I was just a broken girl trying to fix my own self-life, right? Then as I started doing my inner work, my biggest dream after that was that I can inspire my children, that they don't have to start at rock bottom the way I did, that they can start already having these principles ingrained in them. But to have tens of thousands of women, and actually we have like over uh, like 10 million views just on YouTube, and that's after I deleted like a thousand videos. So like millions of views of people witnessing my growth and saying, hmm, that's interesting. I want to do that too. She did that. I want to do it. She makes that easy. I want to make my life easy. Wait, she got that, that, and that. And I was told I can only have this one thing. I want all the things too. So I, that was never the intention. It's just God tricks you into it. When, when the universe is using you as a channel to create, it starts using you as an example to wake other people. Like just like when I forgot that I was a powerful being and that the Kainat wanted to use me to move and expand in those moments where I forgot the DVD, the secret book, the DVD was literally manifested so that I can remember and all of us can remember. So it will find, it will get the message to you in any way that it needs to. Yes, I found God through your work. Thank you, Mina. Oh my God, Erica, that means the world to me that you found God. God is the ultimate power. The fact that you found your ultimate power through my work, oh my goodness. I put the university bundle on my vision board two days ago and so it is. It's done. It's done. Oh. <sighs> Oh, yes, 100%. Whenever people ask, I always say, Mina, go check her out. Thank you, Paula. I appreciate that. Let me see. So interesting. I feel like I'm having deja vu, like I'm here in this very moment and saw this before. Interesting. Interesting. 
You are making it happen despite your circumstances. Thank you, Sharifa. That is something that I'm going to have to credit Sheena. You guys know Sheena. It was my mom's nickname. And that's what everyone called her. And Sheena's birthday is coming up in the first week of April. We're going to be uh, celebrating in Orange County together. I always have an intensive for my mom's birthday, celebrating her divine light. And actually, um, I want to just take a moment to dishonor my father as well. Um, my father was born in March and he passed away in April. My mom was born in April. She passed away in March. And I had this realization last week that I haven't... Um, I'm going to feel emotional saying this. Oh my goodness. I I love both of my parents and I I still communicate with them all the time and they still support my life and I've done a lot to honor my mom's life and her legacy, but I feel like I haven't given my dad his due credit for everything that he's taught me. I'm I'm feeling very emotional, but I feel like this is just another kind of wound that we have with the divine masculine that the divine masculine does so much in our lives and sometimes we don't really give it credit and I, I just had this realization last week I'm like oh my god like I loved my father and I know he made a lot of sacrifices for, for me and he taught me so many things and I'm like Mina you've been really honoring Sheena's message and hearing from her life but what about what about dad you know you haven't really honored him so I'm I'm going to start uh starting in 2025 this year I'm, I'm gonna make a video what i decided is that this year i'm gonna celebrate the merge my, uh, my father by making a video for you guys of um like the top lessons that i love learned from him and how special my dad was and we had a a, a hot and cold relationship for a while um i i didn't realize but i had blamed him for not protecting me during some of that sexual abuse that happened in my childhood. But we were able to mend our ways and we were closer than ever in the last five years of his life. And so starting in 2025, I do want to do something in his honor too. Like we have Sheena's birthday intensive. We're going to do something for daddy as well. Because that's I, I don't like that I've missed that because I'm like, wow, that means that there's still a part of me that's like in some ways not fully honoring the divine masculine and i want to be an example of that for myself for my children and for you because i i definitely don't want my dad my husband my my sons or any of the divine masculine figures in my life to feel like i'm shortchanging them in any way because i've had a profound life experience with both of those energies in my life teaching me so many things and i experienced god as the divine masculine some people like to think of god as the divine feminine obviously god can be any energy that you decide but for me in my relationship with god i like to be the feminine and i want god to be the masculine and that's how i experience it so i'm, I'm gonna put out together a, a, a video honoring my father and teaching with you I, in my Davy course i did share some of the things that i have learned from my dad and they've served me so well and i teach some of those things to my kids and it's time that i i make that video for you guys so that's how i'm gonna do it this year so sheena's birthday is coming up next week also ladies the budapest intensive uh is selling out fast i'll throw the link um, the early bird price goes away soon and there is a four month payment plan. So let me see what you guys are saying. Any questions I can answer to support you in your manifestation? Yes, we need to. I think we, um, Sally, that just shows that sometimes we can like overlook that, right? Like I, you guys know I love masculine energy and you hear me talking about it, but it, I, I was just had this thought last week. I'm like, wow, you haven't done anything to celebrate dad's birthday. You know, um, you need to do something for dad as well. That is going to be very emotional. I can feel it. My relationship with my dad is definitely something I need to do in our work around. Yeah, oh my goodness. I feel like, I feel like masculine energy can sometimes be like a scapegoat. You know what I mean? Like, obviously my, it was not my dad's fault that all those horrific things happened to me. But I think because I thought he was my protector, like he was supposed to protect me. The thing is, my dad was human, you know, he was a beautiful soul. He was a kind person. He was such a giving person. And I um, allowed certain things to ruin my relationship with him. I'm just so glad that those last five years of his life, we, we became so close and I was able to learn so much from him. 
And um, did you guys know that he visited my house a month before he passed away? It's, it's so interesting. It's like, it's almost like both of my parents knew that they were going to go and they made this like last like visit to all of their children's home and then they passed away. And it was, it's just, it's just so interesting to me how it worked out for them. But anyways, I am making an intention that I'm going to honor my dad's legacy as well and share more um, about him and what he taught me. Oh, Christian, it seems like we collectively need this. Okay, you guys are inspiring me. And now I know we collectively manifested this because all of a sudden I'm talking more about my dad and you guys are like, I need this. I have this with my dad. Yes, yes. I just got uh, on better terms with my dad around my wedding last year. We had a distant relationship, but my we be uh, wedding brought a lot of healing and openness. Oh, I love that, Amanda. Yes, you know, as someone that's lost both of my parents, like, I know parents can be difficult. I feel like I have a better relationship with both of them as they're metaphysical. So I understand that relationship as parents can be difficult sometimes. Um, they can, there can be a lot there. It can be heavy at times, but try your best to fix it while they're alive. You know, obviously I know it doesn't happen in every circumstance, but we can, we can try our best through our inner work. Uh, let me see what you guys are saying. I went no contact with my father, but this week discovered I need to talk to him about legal issues, not looking forward to that. So Kayla, what would it feel like to do my magic wand exercise? I've talked about this in a couple of my courses. I forget if I talked about it in Lady Books. You guys can remind me. This is what I want you to do. I want you to pick a future date. It could be a month out, three months out, six months out, a year out. And I want you to write out how it went. So the magic wand scenario is where you literally have like the genie's lamp and you can make it go anywhere you want to. Okay. So let me demonstrate for you. So I do this for all of my courses, my events. So let's, I'm going to tap into the energy of feminine, sacred and savage, which is my orange county event happening next week. Right. So let's say that I was doing the magic wand scenario and you would write this out, but because I'm demonstrating it, I'm not going to write it out. I'm just going to do it. So I'm going to, uh, so I'm going to, this event is on April 3rd and I'm writing this from April 6th. Okay. April 6th, 2024. Oh my God. I can't believe it. So many brilliant, amazing women showed up in Orange County to celebrate Sheena's birthday and get some potent activations. It ended up 10x, 100x, 1000x better than I could have ever imagined. Exactly what I needed to, exactly what they needed to hear came out of my mouth. All the things that they needed to experience were experienced at this event. They were so transformed that my email is flooded testimonial after testimonial. In fact, they are so excited that they're emailing me all the things that they have already manifested. Some women got engaged immediately after the intensive. Some women got married. Some women brought back romance into their relationships. Some women manifested hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, and even millions of dollars. Women that came started amazing businesses. They healed generational trauma. And through their overflow, so much more was created around them. Their children were healed. Those that couldn't get pregnant were pregnant. They had healthy babies. They were able to mend their relationships with colleagues, friends, family members, attract new friends, new relationships into their field, start amazing businesses, leave jobs that no longer resonated, and call in passive income streams and generational legacy wealth into their being. And they found each other, they found this work, and they're so excited that they've already registered for the next event and the university bundled and all the funds that they ever needed for all of the things that they wanna do and experience have been placed in their bank accounts and they are now living the life 
of their dreams. And so it is. So that is the magic wand scenario. You are already setting the state. You're calling it in. And now typically in this scenario, I also write how I got changed, how my team got changed, how my team evolved, how I evolved, new things were manifested, my family. So I, this can take a couple of pages from me, but I wanted to just give you sort of a um, quick version of it. And let me tell you, ladies, every single time I've done this exercise, I do it for courses. I do it for pretty much everything in my life that's coming up it happens even better. Like if I go back and I look at my journal and I'm reading it, I'm like, oh my God, yes, that happened. Yes, that happened. I called that in. Yes, that happened even better than I wrote it. And so do this and then that way you're creating it. So you're not like just going into it blindsided. You've already decided how this gets to be for you. I receive all of this. Thank you. Yay. Uh. Mina, would you consider making a money ritual just like you have a cord cutting ritual in your book? I already did the cord cutting twice. It was so powerful. I actually have one for money as well. Would you like me to read it for you? I have several in here about money. This is the contained in love journal. All of my books and journal can be found at ladyballs, ladyballsbook.com. It's on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Target.com. Like they're available everywhere. Uh, but anyways, let me find it for you guys and I will read it out. So in here, I have the 21 day money cord cutting invocation. Okay, let me see. Is there something else? And then I also have a 21 day wealth and abundance invocation. Would you like me to read out both of them? Okay, so let's do the 21 day money cord cutting invocation. Um, there's also a bit in here about what an invocation is. So let me read that out first because some of you guys might be like, what is an invocation? Let me, okay, here's what an invocation is. Invocations are collaborative prayers with God. Instead of the usual begging type prayers most people do, Invocations can form a relationship with the divine while helping you program what uh, reprogram with your subconscious mind at the same time. Talk about a win-win situation. Invocations are most potent when recited around the same time every day for at least 21 days in a row. If you miss a day, it is best to start the 21-day count once again. I love to add an element of ritual to my morning invocations by lighting a candle and relaxing my body and mind into a semi-meditative state. You can do this by focusing on your breath for a minute or two and then count out loud backwards from 10 to 1. Say the invocation with intention and feeling to get the best out of it. And when I say intention, like say it with some emotion. Don't just recite it. It is okay to go for longer than 21 days if you wish but try and do at least 21 days in a row daily within the same hour that you usually do them, okay? Lastly, I pray that these prompts, affirmations, and invocations transform your life, life like they have mine and the tens of thousands of students before you, oceans of love. Ah, okay, so let's do the 21-day money cord cutting invocation first. Okay, let's get ourselves into a relaxed state. I'm just gonna drop into my cervix, kind of like how I taught you guys in my... Um, did I teach you in Monday's video? Thursday's, th yesterday's video. Oh my God, time passes so weird for me. In yesterday's uh, recorded video, okay. Use this invocation specially for cord cutting around distorted money beliefs. Dear divine, universe, creator, God, Kainat, please help me release with grace all cords, vows, contracts, ties, resentments, and fears of others from this life, lifetimes and past. Please clear every cell with love and set me free from all entanglements from the past, present, and future in all directions of time and space. I now forgive all, including myself, and radiate only love. I now release what no longer serves me and begin with a clear state. I now come home to divine and magical love, abundance, radiance, presence, and faith. I now remember that I am an abundant being and always was. I was born rich and have access to unlimited God supply for all my desires and more. 
I believe with every cell in my body that God will never run out and therefore neither will I. I am rich. I am abundant. I am wealthy. Thank you. And so it is. Okay. So you're going to recite this for 21 days with no gap. So if you, if you forget a day, you come to uh, start over. Okay. So that was the 21 day money cord cutting. Now let's do the 21 day wealth and abundance invocation. So that was to release like the yuckies and this is to call in the yummies. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let me have a sip. One thing that I always forget to tell you guys, make sure you're hydrated. When we're hydrated and when we do these, energy flows better through us. When uh, we're kind of like dehydrated, it's harder for us to read the field and it's harder for the field to also read us. Like we're not, we're like kind of like dry. It's the frequencies don't like conduct through us in the right way. So make sure you are hydrated. Okay, 21 day wealth and abundance invocation. Use this invocation to call in new levels of wealth and abundance into your life. Recite this every day for 21 days straight. If you miss a day, start the 21 day count again. Dear Divine, please shift me with grace into a woman who feels safe and completely worthy of receiving money in miraculous ways. Please allow me to create a spiritual business from a place of ease and grace. Please release all karmic money trauma and toxic ancestral patterns around wealth. I now live in a vibration of divine sacred wealth. I am now divinely I am now a divinely rich woman. I release all shame with ease. I live in the realm of divine abundance. I now fully know and trust that money and financial flow is in my inherent birthright. I am now free of toxic money patterns and vows that no longer serve my highest good. I now receive money with ease. I am now smart with money. I know how to manage my money with ease. I have amazing money boundaries. I am supported and I receive every day with grace. I open my heart and my womb to receive. I send loving energy and abundance into every cell of my body. I forgive my father, my mother, the men in my life, the women in my life, and society's toxic money stories. I reprogram every inch of me to trust in divine abundance and unlimited supply of source. With each breath I take, I am now becoming richer and richer. I own my voice, my talent, and my desires, and so it is. Thank you. So those are the ones that I have in there. There is a couple other things um that are coming up that i didn't plan on talking about but they're coming up so they have to be said one thing that has really served me on my manifestation journey is the fact that as you get into higher levels of consciousness like when you're beyond the self-aware barbie stage you have the ability to hold multiple things in your field at the same time i've noticed that lower state self-aware Barbies and especially basic babes, they have this feeling that it's either this or that. They don't have the kind of consciousness to be able to run two things in their body. So if they love this thing, then they hate this thing. If they want this, then they don't want this. They, it's like black or white thinking. They can't do both things. When I transmuted this, oh my God, so much more became available. There is a big danger for people that can only do one thing. For example, let's say they're feeling great one day. Well, then they're great. They can only feel great. But then if there is a little moment where they feel sad, they can't like feel sad and then feel great. They have to like go like extreme black now or extreme in the other opposite direction. They can't like hold both the energies and because of that they don't they not only limit themselves and how they manifest they cannot even resonate with other people's experience so for example um when i was uh when i had announced that i was buying this mansion uh, my my dream mansion a lot of people were like but mina you said you lived loved your other house i do love my other house i still love my other house but as you're in your higher vibrations, higher frequencies, you can love something and want something else. You can enjoy, have enjoyed something 
and want something better, right? There's so many things like that in my life. Like I enjoyed being single and wanted to get married. Like it doesn't have to be like, oh, I enjoy being married, uh, single, so I can't get married. Or if you get married, it's like, oh, but you said you enjoyed getting mar- uh, single. I guess you didn't. You were lying. No. As you evolve, you can hold so many different things in your life. I'll g- show, give you like an extreme example. When my dad passed away, I was in a state of extreme grief, as you guys can imagine. And at the same time, I was feeling intense joy, bliss, and happiness for my husband, for my children, for you guys that supported me through that trauma. Like, like I had both. People who saw me happy during that time were like, why are you happy? Your dad just died. I'm like, I, I feel grief and I feel joy. Well, they can't comprehend that because, and I get it, like not judging them, in their level of consciousness, you can either have one or the other. There's only two options in their world. But as you start getting into those higher levels, you can do both. So for example, for the last like seven, eight years, I have been extremely happy in my body and joyful and loving every inch of it and wanted to get rid of my loose skin. Some people can't comprehend both of those things. They're like, well, you said you were very happy in your body. I am. And I get to get even better. Okay. So I can love how I look 1000% and want to improve and want to grow. I could be madly and deeply in love with my husband and want us to grow and continue for us to expand. I could love, 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 love my wardrobe and want to add more pieces, exciting things to it. This actually is one of my biggest manifestation secrets. You won't ever hear me saying, I hate this thing and that's why I want this other thing. I love what I have. I cherish what I have. I enjoy what I have. And that's why I'm able to manifest so quickly because Every time, like, it's, it's so funny. When I manifested the, the red Lexus that I wanted, I, it, the, the days before that, I would sit in my other car, the one Irfan had bought me when I had uh, our second son, uh, Ayan. I would, like, feel so much gratitude for that car and the way he bought it for me. Like, I would be brought to tears. Now, some people might be like, well, if you were crying in your car out of joy, why would you want another one? I love that car. And wanted the other one like and is such a powerful manifestation technique it is just because i only manifest from love i don't manifest from hatred i don't know how to manifest from hate i don't have that skill set i couldn't even try to do it if i wanted to if i go into hate energy i can't manifest anything i know some people can and good on you i can't (laughs) i just love life. I love everything that I have. Now, some people might get triggered by that, but I am one of those people that believes whatever car I have is the best car. My husband is the best. My kids are the best. I'm the best. My wardrobe is the best. My house is the best. My clients are the best. My books are the best. But I just, I love life. And that's how I feel about my life. There's a little bird sitting right outside my, let me see if I can get it in the shot. Can you guys see it? Tell me if you can see it. Do you see it sitting in the windowsill? It's peeking in. Do you see that? Hi, baby. Baby. Oh, my God. So in my culture, they say that if birds um, like want to spend time near your house or they make a nest around your house or they're by your house, I don't know why I'm whispering. I feel like I'm going to scare her away even though she's on the outside. <laughs> They say that's a very good sign because that means that you have created like a vibrational field of safety because especially like I remember in our old house, our neighbors had found this bird's nest in uh, their house. And I was like, oh, my God, that's a really, really amazing sign. And she was like, really? I was like, yes, because think about it. 
all moms want to find the safest place to have their babies. And that means that the vibrational field around your house is so safe that the birds wanted to have babies around your house, um, that they deem that to, to be the safest place. So anyways, I just, I, I love the, the life that I've created. None of it I created because I hated the other thing. It was always just like, thank you, God, for this. And that would be also nice. I, uh, that's the next thing that I'm, you know, wanting and I'm desiring. So if you can get yourself out of this black and white thinking, or like you have to hate something to manifest something else, or that if someone manifested something better, that means they hated the other thing. No, chances are they love the other thing so much that because of that love, something better manifested out of it. Yeah. So yes. Oh my God, Nimi, uh, Nimi said, wow, birds are always building their nest in my balcony for years. Girl, they, think about this, in your entire neighborhood, think about a mother's heart. She wants the utmost safety to lay her babies so that they're safe. She found your balcony as the safest place. Like, I could just cry thinking of that. Like, you are safe. Like, your place is safe. You are providing God's creatures like a safe place and a shelter to have their babies. Like, ah! <laughs> oh. I just, oh my God. When I birds visit my balcony, I often think that my passed away family member is checking in. Oh, maybe that was my dad or my mom. I just joined the live, but we'll watch this from the start. Grateful for catching you live. Hey, Aya, happy to have you. My dad, by the way, was freaking obsessed with birds. In fact, sometimes I would hear my mom arguing with him and accusing him of loving his birds more than he loved her. Like these were like serious arguments between them. So I'm not even joking. But my dad was obsessed with birds, like a lot of animals, but birds especially. I don't know, birds, like he must have been a bird in a previous life. I don't know what was up. He was obsessed with birds. And now I'm just surrounded by birds. Like, you know, when we are coming up our driveway, you can't just come up our driveway. You have to wait and let all the ducks like pass by. I'm always like extra careful around my driveway because there's always birds at the front of the house, birds at the back. Like we're just surrounded by, and I never even thought about it. My dad was obsessed with birds. So my whole life is surrounded by birds now. That is interesting. Yeah, maybe it, it's your dad. Yes, I wanted to go. I used to get French manicures all the time in my 20s. And then like I took a break and like I went back to it a little bit today. I'm loving it. Just a little change. Like even I feel like my nail salon is kind of bored with me because they're, they're literally like red again. I'm like, sorry, I'm, I know I'm boring. I'm very predictable. But today, they were very excited that I wanted to get something different. That's so beautiful, Mina. I know what Pakistani Indian provider men are. I'm Indian, and I'm so glad I was blessed with a dad like mine. That is beautiful. Wow, this is resonating. I never liked exercise for years. But recently, I fell in love with my body and it made me suddenly want to exercise by working on one thing, self-love, a new desire open. Yes, because now you're sending out. There's two now. There's two. One of them is red. I just, I just, uh, they feel safe around my house. I just love it. I see you guys. Yes, they're peeking in. Hi, puppies. I won't make any sudden movements. I don't want to scare them. But hi, Goo Goos. You guys doing okay over there? I just love this. Oh, they, they want to listen to the live stream too. So, um, yes, you were talking about self-love exercise. Yes, because now you, you changed one thing through inner work and now new fields open up for you. I was the same way. I used to hate exercising. I was the person that would buy all these gym memberships and never, never, ever go. And now I've had like a home gym for the last like over a decade, been working out consistently for over a decade. And I cannot even imagine, like literally we have this neon sign in our home gym that says my happy place. Yes, it's my happy face, uh, happy place. Like, I love it. I love, love, love it. And I, I was just recently thinking about how I used to hate it. 
And like, I, I would try to do it. I knew I should do it, but I could never do it. And then, you know, you start doing your inner work and the things that you didn't resonate with you now they're your lifeline like i cannot even imagine not treating my body with the utmost re respect one thing i've been working out recently my whole family is doing this you guys know every evening we go for a very very long family wa walk and we usually do three it's 3.2 miles around our like in our neighborhood and we've been doing this since we moved into this house uh it's been a little over 18 months now so close to two years in june it will be two years and recently, all of these random videos started showing up in my al YouTube algorithm, how like you should walk, um, it was like, you know how they say you should walk 10,000 miles or 10,000 steps a day? Well, these videos were talking about how if you walk 15,000 or 20,000, it's actually better for you and like how it like fixes your spine and, and all of this stuff. And it showed up like repeatedly. I'm like, God, is that you? So I sent one of the videos to Irfan and he watched it. He's like, are you thinking what I'm thinking? I'm like, what are you thinking? He's like, let's do more than the 3.2. And I'm like, let's do it. Let's like move it up. Let, like we love doing that, but like, let's push it up a notch. So we've been doing more now. And so slowly we're building up. Like I would love to get to 20,000 steps. I don't know how many miles that would be, but I'm, that's like my, we're manifesting that. We're like slowly building up to it, but it's just, it just feels so good taking care of our body. And actually, we love it for more than just the walking, being in nature, playing with the birds and the squirrels and, you know, talking to our neighbors. We'll see our neighbors on the way. And us, like the conversations we have, we talk about so many things like family stuff, manifestation stuff. Irfan will often like do these riddles and these math problems and this physics stuff. And it's just so life nurturing and life giving. It's so nourishing to the soul. So, but that wouldn't have entered my field before when I wasn't in that state of loving myself and wanting to pour that kind of energy, not into myself, but into my family. And so, yes, I love that. I love that for all of us. Mina, are you doing anything special for the eclipse? Um, I will share that with you guys afterwards. Uh, you'll know why. I can't share it with you now, but I'll share it with you afterwards. Radiating energy, Mina, being on your live stream makes me feel like I am around you in person. Your energy is contagious, even just online. Thank you, Sonia. By the way, Sonia is like one of my absolute favorite words, favorite names. And thank you. I fully received that. Birds make a nest outside my window. Oh, my God. Maybe I needed to like tell you guys that like right this minute. Can you please give some tips on how to manifest good health? It's kind of tough to stay happy when you are in pain. What can be done for inner work? So I am sorry that you're experiencing that. And I know that pain. When I was experiencing rheumatoid arthritis pain, I thought I was dying. Like it was just a really like painful time in my life, especially because I couldn't lift Ayan. He was a, a baby and I couldn't like fully lift him up. He was 18 months. And he was like a big baby and I couldn't lift him. And it made me so sad as a mom not to be able to hold him and not have energy. And what some of the things that I did was I would act as if I was healthy. I found myself first saying things like, God, make me healthy for my kids. And then I realized I'm like, oh, hold on. I'm assuming that I'm sick and asking God to make me better. What if I just thank God for my health? So I started just thinking, I, saying, I started saying, thank you so much for all this energy. Thank you for making me so happy and healthy. Thank you for making it that I can lift my baby again. And within days, resources started showing up. So of course, I did have to take ac action. I ended up going to a massage therapist who recommended uh, you know, removing gluten, which led me through this whole rabbit hole of studying nutrition. So yes, I did take action. I used my masculine energy, but it wasn't until I started praying differently. There's also this little booklet by Louise Hay. Um, does anyone remember the book I'm talking about? It may be listed in my Amazon store. Um, it basically lists all of the diseases and ailments and what inner work you need, like what's causing it. 
Yes, you can heal your body. Thank you, Christina. I'm going to go ahead and pull it up for you and throw the link in for you. You can heal your body. It's, it's actually like a pamphlet. It's not really like a book. It's a little pamphlet. But I used to have it and then I lost it when we moved. I'm going to have to get grab a, another copy of it. But here's the copy for you. You can heal your body by Louise Hay. This book helped me see that rheumatoid arthritis is the symptom of resentment. And that was huge for me because, yes, I was very resent resentful towards my parents for not protecting me, for the abuse that happened, all that stuff. And so I had to go through a whole forgiveness like journey. That was huge. I had to forgive my ex. I had to forgive my parents. I had to like forgive all of these people from my past as well. Yes, it's a very small book. Yes, it's like a pamphlet, but it's very powerful. Very, very powerful. So that can help you kind of like target it from that aspect. I don't believe in just doing one thing. You guys know how I am. Like I will, when I have something that I'm manifesting, like I like to do it from the physical, from the spiritual, from every, the energetic, like from everywhere. So I, I did change my diet, but I also did inner work and I also changed my lifestyle. I also, like all the things. I also put it on my vision board. So I did it in a lot of ways. Also, after I forgave them, because with certain people, it took me a long time to forgive them, I did something that forever changed my life. Because I was like, damn, that took a long time. And that took a lot of effort. And I did not particularly enjoy that. So I asked God, I said, what can I do that I never, ever, ever have to forgive another person again? And the answer I got back was never blame someone. And therefore, you will never have to forgive anyone. And I was like, freaking genius you guys remember in the savage feminine course i talked about how if you know god forbid if like a coyote got into your backyard and ate your chickens you wouldn't have to go through like therapy to forget the coyote right or forgive the coyote you wouldn't have to like have like a, a heart to ha heart with the coyote you wouldn't need closure with the coyote why because you would know that that's what coyotes do you wouldn't be blaming the coyote for having coyote nature you wouldn't have to go through any of it so that has been a game changer for me since that day i've never really had to forgive anyone because i don't really blame anyone like there's no one to blame people just are how people are they do people things and i don't i don't blame them so i don't have to go through that whole thing if you want my uh, forgiveness um meditation it's in the love lights meditation which comes with the basic babe. It's it's like a very like low cost kind of bundle of all of my meditations. I'll grab the link for you guys. Um, it, it gives you like templates of all of my meditations so that you can create one like longer one. I'll throw it in the chat for you guys. We have resources galore. It also comes with the basic babe bundle. So there it is. Yeah, people will always people, right? Like some people are, I talked about this in Lady Balls. Some people are predators, right? Just like imagine going to therapy and being like, I, I'm having trouble forgiving that coyote. They would look at you like they probably have you committed. Maybe like some, you're on something or you are level 10 prey. So I just, people do dumb shit. People have all kinds of issues. I don't blame anyone. I just have high expectations of me and the corner of the universe that I control. I keep that super tight, super cleaned up. And outside of that, people can create whatever the hell they want. Keep it outside from my realm. Okay, I'm trying to do good on my part of the corner. <laughs> That's how I see it. Thanks, Mina. I pray to my God with dedication today to hear some good advice. And then Queen Mina arrives. Oh, yes, this is the answer. The other thing I want to say about prayer is that Instead of asking, I just think. So whatever I am already expecting God to do, I just thank God for it. Like instead of saying, God, will you do this? I just say, thank you, God, for doing this. Thank you 
for manifesting this. Thank you for clearing this. Thank you for blah, blah, blah. Thank you for whatever. That way, you tr you're showing so much faith. You're showing so much trust that you're not asking God. You're just thanking God because you know that it's done. It's checked. It's been done. It's like over. Like you're, you're in the gratitude phase now. Okay? You're enjoying it. What are the many ways to open portals of manifesting money in your life? So Alia, what I did is, this is, kind of, I always laugh when I say this. I don't know why I think it's funny, but I don't care about the portals. I don't care. I don't care where money shows up into my field. Like as long as obviously in my culture, there is the concept of halal and I'll, I, the money that I want in my life, I do want it to be halal because it kills your barakat, right? So barakat is, the universal like uh, manifesting currency, right? It's like, I call it the currencies of the angels. So obviously angels are very clean, pure beings. And I don't want anything around me that's dirty or tainted or any way, whatever, icky, because barakat is really important to me. So because barakat is important to me, this is the conversation that I have with God. Thank you, God, for blessing me with so much abundance. Thank you, God, for blessing me with so much prosperity. I have so much in my life that I'm now able to give from my overflow. I'm able to give to myself, to my children, to their children, and their children, and their children, to seven generations for it. And through my overflow, I'm also able to bless millions and millions of people through the taxes that I pay, through the charity that I give, and also through just my embodiment. The people that watch me living my life are now able to manifest overflow in their life. Thank you so much for opening up so many portals of money. God, I'm giving you full permission. Just give me the money anywhere that you desire. I will not judge. It can come from any number of ways, the paths of least resistance. Dear God, if you do happen to rob a bank though, please don't tell tell me because I do not want to be an accomplice. So keep the dirty money away. Just give me all the clean, halal, burkut money. Like that, I'm open for that. That way, I did this because I never want to be sitting there and saying, oh, but the money was supposed to come from my business or the money was supposed to come from Irfan only or the money was only supposed to come from this affiliate link. I don't care. Surprise me, okay? Surprise me. It can come from anywhere. And we, I just had money come in from the most unusual source, okay? If you were like two days ago, if you told me that's where money was going to come into my life, I would be like, I can believe anything else but not that, okay? And I'll tell you what. It has been over 20 years since... I ever got a, a tax refund over 20 years. For the last 20 years, I've always owed a lot of taxes because I've been a business owner, right? When I owned my real estate business and I had all those properties and capital gains and income, there, there was al always so much taxes to be paid. And then I was a stay-at-home mom not working for like nine years. And then, you know, Irfan was doing the tax thing. And then I started this business and it hit the ground money, running. And I've been paying millions of dollars of taxes every single year. Never, ever, ever in a million years would I believe that I actually ended up overpaying in my taxes for the last quarter and uh, I got a little bit of money back. It was like $60,000 back from the IRS. Girl, like I was like, what? Right? And obviously not really because we still have to pay for this quarter. But you get the drift, right? I was like, okay, God, you keep surprising me. Never in a billion years would I have believed that some, like at my level that I would ever like have overpaid and get anything back or anything like that because there's always just so much to pay. But Again, God is always surprising me. I was very happy to see that. I'm like, okay, all right, uh, getting a little bit of refund, we'll take it. So I don't judge it. I know that's very hard to do for a lot of people. They say, oh, it only has to come from my job or it can only come from my business or it can only come from my man. I'm open to God doing it in any way that God wants to do it. I, all the halal ways are open to me. Thank you for the prayer. I will pray to this throughout my journey. Forever grateful. Awesome. Oh, we've got lots of Sonia's here today.
My dad always has birds, even a small business with birds. Today is his birthday. Oh, happy birthday, dad. Oh, my goodness. How funny that we start talking about birds. I, I feel like birds are like my dad's sort of interaction with me and sunflowers, my mom's favorite flower. Oh, my God. I have been seeing 1111 and sunflowers like they're stalking me. Okay. Now I'm not talking about seeing 1111 and sunflowers occasionally. I mean, for the last week, I swear to God, they are freaking stalking me like in, in the most weirdest places, like everywhere. I'm just like, are you sunflowers? Are you stalking me? Like, what is happening? Like my mom's like definitely trying to make contact. Definitely trying to make contact. Thank you, Brianna. She said you're magical. We're all magical. Yes, we all have that. We all have that power. I love that. Guys, I'm so excited to see you guys next week. But also, Budapest, Hungary, that's called, it's called Berkat in Budapest. And I'll throw that link for you guys. We're doing the early bird right now. I also have something really special launching um, after the, the LA intensive. It's called Kainath. I'm so excited about it. I was deciding not to tell you guys about it until after I come back from LA, but I can't stop. Like, I'm just so excited. Okay, so Kainath means all that is. It means universe. It means everything in Urdu, in my parents' native language. And it's such a beautiful word. It makes me emotional when I think about it. it it's, it's like another word for God. It, it just... Guy not. There's something so heavy and powerful and deep, like heavy in like depth way, right? Like not heavy negative, but like heavy as in like, damn, that's deep. And that course is ready to be taught. And I'm going to be doing it live with you guys. And it is going to be the manifestation of manifestation of manifestation of manifestation courses. And yes, I'm super excited. Like it's giving me chills. Can you, like I can't even stop myself from telling you guys about it because I'm super excited. Um, yes. Oh my God, you signed up for Budapest. Yay. By the way, I'm so shocked at this. So every time I do an event, people come from all over the world. Like I've gotten, like I've accepted that. That's not the shocking part. Like what's really interesting is that when I chose like Budapest as a location, I thought, People from all over Europe were going to buy because it's like a very easy place to get to. What's the biggest shock for that intensive, besides the fact that it's selling out so quickly, is that like 80% of the people buying actually live in Budapest and I'm like, or in Hungary. And I'm like, wow, I didn't know what are the chances that I would have so many students in Hungary. Don't you think that's odd? Because I have people all over the world. So of course I have people in Hungary, that's not surprising. It's just the number of people that are actually living there who are signing up. I don't know. I wasn't expecting that. There's people coming from other countries as well, from the US. We've got people coming from all over Europe. But how can so many people be living in Hungary? I just, I don't know. I just thought it so interesting. <laughs> are you guys surprised about that or no? Yes, why not? I know. I'm so excited about it. By the way, it's it's totally a secret offer right now because like I don't the next steps haven't been given so I don't have much information about it but if there's someone that's like I'm already there I'll send you the link I was not planning on like giving you guys the link like I literally just turned it on draft <laughs> I'm doing it now God, I tell you, give me a minute and you don't listen. Like I told you, I'm going to announce this when I come back, but you don't listen to me. God just like does whatever God wants to do. Like seriously, I, I kept saying, not now, give me a minute. <laughs> I guess we're doing this now. I, I swear I get tricked into stuff all the time. This is Skynoth. Super powerful. Look at this. Just the name. It's just so heavy. As one of those people, not surprised. I think I manifested you coming here. Yeah, like who would think like Hungary, right? And it was like, no, it's happening in Hungary. And then you guys are now going to have this huge community of people in Hungary because I was thinking, okay, maybe three or four people will sign up from Hungary and then a whole bunch of people will come from Europe and then some people from come to the US. Mm -mm. Like 80% of the people are from Hungary. Like who has that many students 
in one like country in Hungary. Like I'm so excited. Ah, I've been looking at pictures and we've been planning and it's gonna be so fun. Uh, someone else said I manifested that you come to Hungary. Did you guys like all get together and do like a collective thing or what? I'm so excited for Budapest. Been on my bucket list since forever. You guys manifested this. This is why it happened. You did it. A few days ago, a parrot appeared in my family's backyard and decided to stay in our house. We didn't think anything until my little sister was talking to a random on a video game about the bird. And he asked, did someone die recently? Our grandma passed away the day before. Oh my God. It's grandma checking in on you guys. <gasps> my heart. <laughs> My first live. Hi, Nida. I've been thinking about you. I'm like, I haven't seen you on a live in a minute. Went for my first personal training session yesterday while fasting. Oh my goodness. Been questioning if it's too much to do fasting. Join the live and you're talking about the exact topic. Oh, oh my goodness. That, that is brave. Because I know like in um, Ramzan, it's dry fasting. So you can't even have water, girl. That is, that's courageous. My friend went to the U.S. but said, I want you to come here. <laughs> wow. We have people come. Oh, my God. I had someone at one of my intensives. Um, th this was shocking to me. This was in 2020. There was a girl. We were like, this was like a 20 women intensive. We were going over and we were like, where did you come from? We we're talking. And this girl goes. I flew in from Australia and I'm like, isn't that like 24 hours? He's like, yeah. And she's like, I found you the day before. I'm like, what? You are telling me that you found me on YouTube, booked my intensive, got on a 24 hour flight the next day. And here you are. And she's like, yep. And I was like, okay. <laughs> we have a lot of people, by the way, come to us from Australia. Every intensive, we have at least one or two coming from like a 24 hour flight. But the fact that she had found me the day before, I'm like, okay, when you decide, you decide. When you know, you know. And when you named it Barkat, I was literally looking into that after some of your videos. Oh my God. So I don't know if you know this, but we had the, the, like the placeholder inside our site as Budapest 2024. And my team was waiting for me to come up with a name. And I was like, there is no name. It's just Budapest for now but a name will come to me. And they were like, okay. And then I just woke up and I was like, Budapest, like, or Barkat in Budapest. And then the ego stepped in. It's like, you already have a chorus named Barkat, Nina. I'm like, yeah, bitch. But God said Barkat in Budapest. So that's what I named it. And so that's the day we were like, that's what it's going to be. So I, I'm human and I have like the downloads. And then there's sometimes like I start second guessing. It's like, nope that's that's the name because that's what god said that's the thing was downloaded that's what we're doing kainat has been wanting to come through for a while when that name came through about eight months ago i'll be honest i think i was like in like my peasant energy with it because i was like kainat is too big of a word <gasps> i can't teach kainat yet like i was doing that but like i woke up a couple days ago and i was like we're teaching Kainat 2024. It's time. Like we're doing it now. And all of a sudden I knew I was ready. I think that that is just, it's just such a big concept in my culture that I was just like, Oh, I can't teach that yet. But like, I'm ready. We're ready to teach it. I feel like this is going to like separate the eras. Like it's going to be life before Kainat and like life after Kainat is what it feels like to me. So yeah. Oh, so Australia is on our list. Yes, it is. Someone said Australia next, please. It is. If you guys are willing to fly from all the way to Australia to come see me in the US, yes, I can come to you as well. I am coming to Australia. Yes, we are doing it. Um, and guys, I, I do have a four month payment plan for Budapest because I know that our payment plans on our site don't work outside the US. So I added a special one for that. You never know, girly. If you're wondering about your country, manifest it through God because what happens is when you start putting that on the field, 
God will plant that idea in my mind. And all of a sudden I'll wake up saying, we have to go, we have to go do it here. That's what happened when hungry, just like, it was like, we have to do it there. And now, now you're telling me that you made it happen. I didn't know that, right? It's just like, God will just plant the idea. So if you want me to do it in your place, talk to the big guy and have him plant it in my consciousness. Have him like have him tell me because then we're doing it. That's just how it works for me every time. Yes, it has to be a download. It has to be an order. Like when God is your boss, it has to be orders from above. And you have already proven to me that you are super powerful in the way that you guys have you collectively manifest this stuff. So do it. Do it, do it, do it. Don't tell me. Tell the big guy. Because he's going to plant it in my mind, and then I can't help it but do it. Then once it's planted in there, like, no one can stop me. It's like, it's a done deal. It's set in stone. God said it. Did I actually, did I give you guys the link for Kainat? I totally can't even remember. Did I? Yes, I did. Oh, my God. I can't believe I did it. You know, would you speak about being more joyful sometime? I know how you get excited and giggle. I used to be like that and I'm missing that version of me. So that being joyful is our natural state. When things happen in our life, we get conditioned out of it. So this is why inner work is so important because when you start removing, it's called like deconditioning or inner work, whatever you want to call it. When you start uh when you start removing those things, then the natural state that was already there, it's already you. You're not learning how to be joyful. It's already there underneath all the other stuff. So when you remove that stuff that's stopping you from your natural state of joy, it's just naturally present. So I had lost that too. I was born joyful and then stuff happened and then I lost my joy. And then happy, giggly people used to actually trigger me because my subconscious, my internal was going, my wounds were going, bad stuff has happened to me and you're over here giggling like I'm not safe. So I had to do inner work to learn to be safe and learn to go back to that feeling of joy again. So when you start doing inner work, you're not um your like default state starts rising and you revert back to who you were how god made you how you were always supposed to be so um the best course for that is the femme fortune container course because it helps you quantify like levels of joy and how to slowly move up and reset it what you want is robust. So some people, they do this. They have like moments of joy and then they fall hard and then they're like down, right? What you want to do is you want to build it in a way where it's robust, where you like set the, you, you're moving your edge, you're moving your emotional set point as you're going so that whatever you revert back to your dominant also keeps rising up. Yeah, Diane, I, I, I know what you mean that I had become like that too. And probably things happen to you, you experience some things where it didn't feel safe to be in your feminine, in your joyful, in your giggly, like light, playful, flirty energy. I hear you. But it's, it's very much your natural state. Maybe in the next class, we can talk, we can make it all about like raising your vibration. I'm writing it down. That'll be our next training. Okay. And listen, this is a human journey. We all have moments where we have like we I had uh, I was sharing this with the ladies in Davy. Is there anyone here that was in Davy? I can't say this publicly because uh, I don't want to hurt uh, you know anyone's feelings if they might hear it, but I had um I had hired someone in my life. I'm trying to say this respectfully because you know, I don't want to hurt anyone's feeling. I know everyone's human. But I hired someone that had access to me physically and they were going through something. 
And I was in a really vulnerable state in my life at this time because I had just had that surgery, right, that I told you guys about. And in that state, giving her physical access to me when she was going through some stuff, you guys know I'm a projector, I have all open centers, I started absorbing some of her energy and amplifying it in my life. And I just felt off like like something wasn't it felt like something wasn't right and it took me a while to figure out what was happening i was like i, I don't feel like myself and at first i'm like oh just be kind to yourself mina you just had surgery but it wasn't the surgery it was just it's like ha, um her default state was very much lower than mine and i couldn't keep my default state because i was in a vulnerable place and she had physical access to me so anyways, it took me a minute to figure out what the hell was happening. But when I did, I was like, oh, my God, access cut, cord cutting started, clearing out my centers, emptying them out. And I'm back. Like all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, like it's like it's, it's like I had to unplug her and plug back into God. And it took me a minute, but it can happen. So I think it's um, it's important to be aware it's important to be honest. And again, I'm, I'm, I don't have hard feelings against her. She was in her self-aware Barbie. I'm sure she's going through stuff. And um, I just, I should have been more trusting of my gut feeling because I remember the first time I saw her, I had like a gut feeling response that maybe this wasn't the right person for me, but I was vulnerable in that state. I had just had the surgery. I was like a, you know, a few days out and I, I just went with it. So we all have those moments where we second guess our gut, but the minute I unplugged her and plugged back into God, game back on. So it's never too late. You're never starting from the beginning. I'm not starting from the beginning. All I did is unplug her, plug back into God, and it's like Nina's back and she's better than ever. So yeah. Yes, physical access can block your chakras. It's worse for healthcare providers. So you have to shrink your energy. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yes, Queen, you remember what I'm talking about. Um, queen, you're gonna know what I mean. But I have to be careful because I like, I don't, I don't, she might be listening. But um, the last couple of encounters were very different. Let me just say that I'll update you guys and baby some other time. But mm hmm. Mm hmm. It was very different. <laughs> Once I like regained myself, Every got everyone got put back in their place. <laughs> yeah, I won't say too much publicly, but yeah. Okay, you guys want the vibration one? This live has the energy of spring and newness. <gasps> yes, here's oh my god! Thank you for saying that. So you guys, happy new year! So you guys remember when I talked about how I have like many New Years in one year? So this is New Year's week for us because April 1st begins a new year for me and Team Universe Girl. So we split our year into four to six years. And that's why you're sensing that energy is because we are literally celebrating New Year's here, like in our in Team Universe group. So you are, you're so intuitive that you felt it from our field. Isn't that interesting? Like you literally felt it from our field. Yes. Happy New Year, Paula. Thank you. Yes, it's, I can't believe how intuitive you guys are. Like, you're so good. You're psychic. LOL, yes, uh, Queen said, I'm glad it all worked out for you, Davey, more activated. If I, I, I'm like dying to like update you because if I tell you a couple more things, you're gonna, you're gonna, your jaw is gonna be on the ground. I'm gonna, I'll do like an audio update after LA and, and post it on there because like it changed quick. <laughs> And thank you, Queen, as well, because I know you guys like witnessing that whole thing and like helping me reaccess my power through it, like live also helped me. So thank you for that. It definitely helped. Wow, I remember someone spoke to me once about empathy. He said, empathy is a mirror, not a sponge. When the person moves away from you, you don't keep their reflection. Don't soak up their emotions. Ooh, that is deep. That is some deep stuff. I love that. 
Diana said, um, Diane said, literally crying right now. Thank you so much. Been doing inner work and will definitely manifest the Femme Fortune container course, babe. I'm so happy. I feel like crying is so good because you're like literally just releasing it right now. Does anyone remember if I had put the Femme Fortune container formula in the book? Guys, sorry, I forget sometimes. My life like manifests so quickly that I forget. Does anyone remember? Those of you guys that have the book. I feel like I want to give Diane something more. I don't remember if I had put it in there. There is a chapter on container work. There is. If you have the book, babe, reread it. I think the book will help you manifest the money or, or just your natural state, whatever you need, <laughs> whatever you really need to manifest right now. And sometimes we don't know. Sometimes I'm like, I'm, I'm feeling good. God, manifest me whatever you want me to have. That's been my state for the last like 18 months where I don't really like, you know, remember before where I like intentionally put things on my vision board, wrote it in my journal for the last like 18 months, even a little bit longer. It's been less and less of that. Where, and now I'm just like in a joyful state. And then the thing comes up like, oh, God. Thank you. I didn't know, even know that I needed to manifest that, but thank you. So there is that state where God can just decide for you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sally confirmed that the book has the container stuff. Yes. Diane, I hope you return back to that. And the thing is, remember that you don't have to learn anything. You just have to take the other stuff out. And also remember that you can hold multiple states in your body at the same time. You could be sad and joyful. You could be grieving and joyful. You can be sad and flirty. You can hold multiple states. It's a myth that only you can hold one. What will happen is when you start holding multiple states, you're going to drown out the more negative state, the, the lower vibe state. One way you could do this is if you have um, Netflix or even on YouTube, go and find some funny like stand-up comedy shows or something funny that's going to make you laugh and watch that on repeat. Like watch funny things, giggle and laugh. Like like things that are just silly, that are just gonna like make you laugh so hard. Um, can someone recommend stuff for her? So yeah, that might be a good way. Cause that I'm not saying don't feel down, feel that and laugh and be funny. And like put yourself into both of the energies and then the higher energy will drown out the lower vibe energy. Theo Vaughn, is that someone funny? Okay, do I need to watch this person? Let me write that down. Okay, Diane, you, you're getting some suggestions. I don't know who this is, but I'm going to go check this person out myself as well. Just give her things that she's just going to like die laughing, like hilarious stuff. You know, I just love your live streams. Time to reread Lady Balls for the third time. Girl, you ha you read it for the third time. Oh, I feel so special. I want to do like a re I want to do like readings too. Maybe I'll, we'll put we'll add that to our list. I want to start like reading it with you guys. That'll be fun. That'll be so fun. We can read it together. Always get some new stuff out of it. Oh, thank you, Peaches. Oh my God, I have another book suggestion. Thank you for getting my book. I also have another book suggestion. Let me find it for you guys. What is the name? It's not really a book. It's like a de devotional kind of thing where you just open it up and you read a page every day. Oh, I know. Okay, everyone needs this. No, not the audible. I would recommend, I would highly recommend getting the physical copy of this. If for forever, whatever reason you can't, then um, if money is tight or whatever, just sign up for their Facebook page because they have like a free version. I think they have an email newsletter version too. I like having the physical copy. Okay, here's the name. You guys, you're going to thank me later. You're, you're going to be thanking me forever for this. This is like so amazing. If this is not going to put you in a high vibe, I don't know what will. Okay, here it is. Ah, I'm so excited for you guys. You're going to love this. So what I do is I have it 
Um, I have multiple copies of this, by the way. I have it on my nightstand, and I just open it to like a random page, and then that's what the universe is saying. Do, do I have a copy in here somewhere too? I, I don't know why. I feel like I brought a copy. Oh, my God. No freaking way. I just had a feeling that I had it. I swear to God, I was like not even planning on sharing this with you guys. You're stalking me. I know you're stalking me. Here's the bug. I can't believe you were here too. I, I love this book so much that I bought countless copies. I've given them away. I have them pretty much in every room of the house. Like, I, I just love it. it. It's so good. This is what it looks like. I threw in the link for you. I just had a feeling when I said that to you guys, I had a feeling that it was here somewhere and then it was like, it's behind you. And there she was. There she is. So let me, let me just open it. I have a bookmark in here. So let's just see what the bookmark says. Oh my God. This is a good one. Okay. So we're on page 229 and it says, fret not, time is on your side. So are all the angels and no is never forever. And then it says, avoid gray areas. There the illusion of safety is guarded by the lies of maybe sometimes and I don't know. There is a truth. There is a way. Life is absolute and its principles exacting. If you put it out there, it has to come back. Ask and it must be revealed. Think, speak, and move with your desires and nothing will ever be the same. I love this book so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mike Dooley, for writing this book. Thank you for the universe for using Mike Dooley to get these messages to us. These are like the best. They are so good. Here's another message. I feel like this one's for Diane. Those feelings you most want aren't going to come from somewhere new, someone special, or something wonderful. Doesn't work like that. They're going to come from within, where they now wait for permission to be released, often in terms of somewhere new, somewhere someone special, or something wonderful. Chicka boom, the universe. Whatever you hope to feel in the future, you can decide to feel it right now. Diane, this was for you. I'm going to read that last bit again. Whatever you hope to feel in the future, you can decide to feel it right now. Was this for Diane or no? Like, was it? Is it turning it around? Hold on, let me see on my big screen if it's like turning it around. <laughs> Freaking hilarious. No, it's not turning it around. Why is it showing it to me that way? That was for you, babe. So just have this near you and then you can just, and if you can't order for whatever reason, if you go to Mike Dooley's um, website, is that where you sign? There's a place to sign up where they email you one a day. So I just like having the book. I just like like holding it. It's just a very high vibration book. And I like just randomly like asking a question and opening it. And like, I'm telling you, it's like the exact answer you need will be right there. It will be right there. Oh, hi, Hunter. She said... It was so lovely chatting with you last week. The girls have been loving the podcast episode. Thank you, babe. So Hajar Abid just interviewed me for her podcast. And uh, that was, was that last week, babe? Yeah, it was like very recent. I'm subscribed to the email. They always send the sweetest birthday messages. Awesome. I feel like God and the universe send me messages through songs and books. God, you want to talk to me like this? Mina, I can feel your love. Thank you so much. And I'll get that book today. Awesome. Yes. And read it, read it. And um, yeah, you don't, you don't have to just read one either. You can read multiple. Sometimes I cheat and I just read like a whole bunch. But it's just so fun. It's just a really high vibe book. Probably one of like the most highest vibration ones out there. God is transforming my life through you. And I feel like I have been doing so much growth. And recently with watching you and my relationship with God, and I'm just so grateful. Thank you, Jessica. God will use the path of least resistance. I used to get those emails before he wrote a book. They were amazing. Um, is this newer? I wonder how old this book is. Yeah. Let me see. Oops. He channeled all of them. 
Oops, hold on. I don't know. I keep dropping my my ear set. Can you still hear me when I drop it? I'm just curious. Can you see when this was even written? Just curious. Is this recent? Oh, 2020. Yeah. I know he's had these for like a long time. He was one of the uh, speakers in the secret DVD. And so he's been writing these for a long time, but I think he just combined them in a book recently. So yeah, this is a good one. It's a really great gift too, I feel. I've given it to so many people. Yeah, I, I cannot believe that was last week, Hodger. I feel like at least a few months have passed by since we did that interview. Oh my God, there was this other interview I did recently where I was, so I think, I don't even remember, you guys, uh, it was with my one of my students. Um, how long ago was that? Anyways, one of my other students interviewed me when I was on the medication after my surgery and I had already moved her interview once and I felt really bad. And even though I wasn't feeling good, I'm like, I don't wanna move it again. And that medication I was taking was making me have massive brain fog. And I was so embarrassed because she would ask me a question and I would forget the question. <laughs> so our first interview together was like so good. And then this one, I was like, mm, it wasn't that great because I was like, I should have just moved it. But anyways, I feel like yours and mine was better. <laughs> but yeah, I can't believe that was last week. Awesome, ladies. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I had so much fun. And I will be back uh, soon with the How to Keep Your Vibration High uh, episode, Masterclass. And uh, maybe I'll try to see if I can do it over the weekend. I'm not sure. We have a lot going on over here as it's our like last week of this year for us. April 1st is the first year. We've got the intensive coming up, but I'll try to be on soon. And Anyways, guys, I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one. I had so much fun. I don't even want to say goodbye. I got to go. Bye. <laughs> Bye, everyone.